I shall start. I'm very pleased to be uh, with you this afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Philippe Aubry. Uh, my company is uh, Storengy. Um, I am the uh, leader of uh, the team uh, called Hive, uh, who um, uh, competed in the Helsinki uh, Energy uh, Challenge recently. I'm going to uh, explain uh, a bit more about our solution. Uh, first of all, a, a few words about uh, um, the, uh, the, the the team itself. Uh, how how did it start? Well, uh, by the, uh, the some discussion between uh, the two of us, really, New Heat on one side. Uh, this is a, a French company uh, dealing with uh, solar thermal, and and Storengy ourselves uh, were more into uh, uh, geothermal energy, heat storage. Uh, and so on, and also a project management and, and development. Um, each of us had, uh, uh, let's say, uh, part of the um, uh, the team needed to respond to the uh, the, the challenge. We, we decided to uh, join efforts and, and, and make a team out of uh, out of it. You see here on the uh, the, the, the screen the uh, names of the uh, um, parts of this uh, team: uh, Savo Solar from uh, from Finland. Uh, New Heat, um, AEE uh, in tech. And this is an Austrian company uh, dealing with energy transition. Um, then some, uh, some NG uh, components. So the uh, NG lab, Tractable, um, two, uh, two uh, development entities of NG, and, and finally Plan Energy uh, from Denmark. So that's, that's uh, the team um, uh, behind Hive. Um, why the name? Because we didn't have that name in the, the first place. Well, a number of reasons, really. Uh, first, it's close to uh, Uva, sorry for the pronunciation, <laughs> um, which uh, I'm told uh, means uh, good uh, in Finnish. Uh, it's also a short name. Uh, it's uh, an acronym for Helsinki Innovative and Versatile Energies. Uh, a good picture for our team, uh, I think most importantly, because I think we all um, uh, uh, work to, uh, to the solution and help each other to, uh, to define the solution. And, and, and finally, a good picture also for, for the solution because our um, energy mix or asset mix uh, is, is an assembly of uh, production tools, uh, helping each other and, and contributing to the satisfaction of the uh, city's heat demand. Um, our solution for, for Helsinki, well, first of all, a, a step backward. Uh, what are the, um, the requirements? Um, in terms of uh, yearly heat supplies, you see uh, tables on the uh, top left. Um, we have a heat supply, um, uh, a heat need, let's say, uh, ranging from uh, 6 to 5.5 gigawatt hour per year. So, so uh, uh, sorry, terawatt hour uh, uh, per year. So that's, uh, let's say, a, a big demand, uh, uh, making it uh, among the, uh, the top 10 in, in the world, I think, for district heating grids. Uh, secondly, um, you have um, uh, this curve on the right side of the, uh, the, uh, the slide uh, showing um, uh, Helsinki's targeted uh, emissions, greenhouse gas emissions from, uh, from uh, DH uh, heat production. Um, this shows a, a sharp reduction uh, in broad terms, a reduction by 1 million uh, ton equivalent CO2 per year. Uh, so quite, quite an ambitious uh, uh, target, let's say. And finally, um, in, these, uh, in this picture, a number of uh, uh, very important requirements First, a national ban on coal firing by 1st of May 2029. Second, the, uh, the city target uh, to have a zero fossil fuel burning by 2035. And, and also um, a requirement from the city to minimize the use of biomass. This, I think, constitutes the, uh, the picture uh, against which uh, uh, we had to work. Um, now, a few words about our um, baseline scenario, or at least the, the, the key features. Um, number one, um, uh, we shall gradually increase um, uh, the um, number of uh, renewable uh, production assets. Um, really, two, uh, two types mainly in our baseline solution, 
seawater heat pumps. Uh, why? Uh, because there is uh, uh, no, uh, quite a large sea front in uh, in Helsinki. It's a, it's it's a very large supply of carbon free uh, heat. Uh, plus the um, the fin the Finnish uh, power mix uh, has and will have a, a low carbon content, so which makes it quite attractive. The uh, the second type of uh, heat production asset will be uh, solar thermal in our case, which, as you know, is a zero carbon uh, heat. Uh, second uh, key feature in our solution is. Uh, uh, additional storage. The, the city has already uh, built uh, a number of uh, heat storages. Um, uh, we have included in our uh, solution uh, uh, large capacities of two types, uh, PTES, so PET uh, thermal energy storage. Um, that is a seasonal storage and BTES, borehole thermal energy storage which uh, we use as a, a large energy buffer uh, for, let's say, peak and, and, and backup supply. To um, help those uh, new assets you know, um, satisfy the requirements, uh, we have also um, a program for lowering uh, district heating uh, operating temperatures. Uh, they are now um, they go up now to the uh, to over 100 degrees C uh, in winter time. Um, uh, we want to uh, help the city operate at lower temperatures so as to minimize or even eliminate the need for high product high temperature production assets like biomass boilers or electrical boilers. And and finally, we will support. Um, uh, demand side management uh, measures already um, uh, implemented by the city. Um, now, some, uh, uh, some more details about our various uh, uh, production assets. Um, uh, heat pumps, first of all, um, they are the, uh, the, the, the biggest by uh, installed capacity, uh, forcing about uh, 500 megawatt thermal. Um, the plan is to have uh, a number of, uh, let's say, small capacity um, uh, units uh, installed along the coast to uh, harvest the, the heat from the sea. Second, uh, second production asset, solar thermal. Um, this uh, will be, uh, this will come in our solution uh, in the form of uh, solar thermal fields. Uh, and uh, we have anticipate, uh, anticipated two fields of uh, 25 megawatt each. Uh, regarding um, uh, storage units, uh, pit uh, thermal energy storage, well, the plan is to have uh, two uh, large volume units uh, in the, uh, the city outskirts. Uh, you see here some, uh, some metrics for them. Uh, in total, 275 megawatt of uh, power and 45 uh, megawatt hour of uh, energy stored uh, in, this, uh, in these uh, units. Um, BTES now um, uh, is, is our uh, backup and, and uh, top peak uh, capacity. The plan is to have uh, about uh, 150 megawatt of installed power and uh, 300 megawatt hour of, uh, of energy stored. How, how do we uh, do this? Well, we install uh, and we will install um, a number of uh, clusters, let's say, of, of, uh, the, uh, of, of boreholes uh, distributed in the city. And uh, we will target uh, less valuable pieces of land. Uh, I have shown, for example, here, the, uh, the green areas in, uh, in, uh, in the highway uh, crossing. Uh, which have uh, quite extensive uh, areas of uh, unused uh, land, and we can easily uh, uh, fit uh, our uh, BTS into such areas. Um, uh, finally, a, a general map uh, explaining uh, how the, uh, the hive contribution would be distributed in the city uh, by the year 2035. In addition to the assets I have just described, you will see also a number of uh, electrical boilers, which are required as uh, high temperature uh, production assets uh, when, uh, when fossil fuel uh, is no longer used. Uh, 
um, uh, an overall picture of the scenario. Um, on the left side of the uh, the, uh, the slide, uh, you see how uh, coal in black uh, will uh, decrease to be uh, to come to a uh, uh, zero uh, coal by 2028. Then uh, gas, uh, gas and fuel, are in fact, is is also uh, coming down uh, to zero by 2035, and the higher solution uh, will add to. Um, uh, renewable assets already uh, implemented and, and, and developed by uh, Helen and the city uh, to make, uh, in the end, the uh, the larger uh, contribution uh, to the to the heat demand. Um, on the uh, right side, you see the again the um, uh, Helsinki's uh, uh, target for greenhouse gas emissions uh, uh, along the years, and uh, in uh, the green curve uh, shows what the uh, the hive baseline scenario would achieve so slightly better than the the target uh, so quite a, a massive reduction in the uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, from uh, uh, dh uh, heat uh, in the city some uh, flexibility consideration uh, uh, in uh, of our scheme um, you see um, at the top uh, um, the, uh, the heat consumption in a, in a typical week in uh, January 2035. Um, I will not go into uh, a detailed analysis of this graph, but um, uh, some, some uh, key features. Number one, uh, all the base load uh, uh, comes in, in fairly uh, uh, thin layers. Uh, well, that's, that's uh, in a, a feature of, of our um, uh, energy mix. Uh, we have uh, uh, diversified sources of supply. Each of them uh, has not, uh, let's say, a major uh, input, which makes the system overall uh, uh, more reliable, stable, uh, needing uh, less uh, backup energy. The, the, the peak capacity is, uh, is supplied uh, through um, uh, electrical boilers uh, in, uh, in uh, light green. And uh, our uh, storages, well, both the, uh, the city storage is already uh, in use or, or, or coming use in the, in the next few years, plus the, the P-test uh, installed under the, uh, the Hive solution. Um, you see on the, uh, the right uh, size, side of the, uh, the slide, sorry, uh, the annual uh, consumption uh, of heat um, uh, in, in, the, in the various months. Um, this picture illustrates that the, uh, the high temperature uh, assets like uh, electrical boilers or biomass boilers will be only uh, triggered in, in the winter, in winter months, not, uh, not the rest of the year. It also, this, uh, this uh, graph also illustrates uh, uh, to some extent uh, how uh, storage is, uh, is, uh, is are loaded and unloaded uh, along the uh, the month of, of a typical year. Um, again, in terms of um, um, flexibility, uh, in terms of storage, uh, you see here the uh, the the roles, the two roles of uh, of storage uh, illustrated in uh, on this slide. Uh, regarding uh, p tests, you can see um, um, uh, here a modeling of uh, uh, charging and discharging sequences. Uh, in a, in a typical year uh, beyond 2035. See quite a lot of uh, movement. They are, they are, uh, these um, uh, units are really meant as uh, uh, high power, uh, fast response and, and seasonal storages. You won't see a similar picture for B tests because uh, they are primarily um, uh, meant as uh, backup services, uh, backup units. Uh, so they will only uh, come into the picture in case of uh, uh, disruption in one of the other um, uh, production uh, means, or in case of uh, a, a very special uh, cold spell in uh, in winter. Um, the main takeaways uh, from uh, from this uh, presentation, finally, and, and and the conclusion of this presentation, well, Hive relies on a combination of various assets. Various is the important uh, word. We have renewable heat production, large storage capacity, 
and uh, we uh, help all this by operation of the, uh, the grid at uh, a lower temperature than today. Uh, second point, by 2035, nearly 50% of the heat demand uh, would be supplied by seawater heat pumps. So a considerable part of the, of the uh, 2.5 terawatt hour. Um, third and quite important uh, point, uh, greenhouse gas emissions will fall by approximately 1 million CO2 uh, equivalent per year. Um, some uh, some um, land use considerations as well. The, 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 the heat production system will use uh, less land uh, in the densely populated area of the city. Uh, I mean, our heat pumps will use uh, less uh, uh, land than, uh, for example, the, the coal-fired station or the the gas uh, uh, plants used today in uh, near or in or near the uh, the city center. Uh, while our land use uh, outside the city center uh, will be kept minimal. I mean, we have the the two uh, P tests, the two uh, solar thermal uh, fields. The uh, the solar thermal fields also allow uh, mixed use. Uh, they can be uh, simultaneously used for grazing or educational purposes, so it's not all for heat, it's, uh, it's not frozen uh, land. And as you've seen before, the, the, the bee test can be uh, merged in, into an area of uh, uh, low value. Uh, finally, this, um, this baseline scenario is designed for stage development, which means that it, the, uh, the, the course of deployment or the, uh, the energy mix uh, can be adapted uh, along the years. I mean, 15 years is, uh, is a fairly significant amount of time. The, the scenario is, is therefore flexible to uh, an evolution in the heat demand. Or uh, if um, a new uh, heat supply uh, opportunities uh, will arise, um, I think the, the city will be in a position to uh, to take these opportunities and and and, and maybe uh, uh, even uh, make this uh, scheme uh, better than uh, proposed today. Thank you very much. I'm now ready uh, with uh, my uh, colleagues at uh, Savo Solar to answer questions you may have. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, are there any questions? for Philip and the team. And please uh, either uh, write them in the chat or the other way is, is you can raise the hand and I can allow you to talk if you want to uh, ask your question. Uh, and in the meantime, I think that I can ask uh, Philip the first question. Uh, it's the uh, slide that uh, has the asset mix in the headline. Yes. And you have those uh, columns there. Uh, do I understand it correctly that the amount of, of, of heat uh, energy required is, is going to uh, decrease because those columns are smaller by the year? If you can... Yes, yes this, is, this is correct. This is in fact uh, uh, something uh, agreed with the uh, the city uh, it is expected that the uh, the heat demand from the grid will uh, decrease as a result of um, uh, um, insulation measures additional insulation measures you know as a result also of uh, demand side management measures yeah so all, all right. in all it is um, uh, the, the the city's forecast as is that uh, the, the, the heat demand in the city will, uh, well, let's say, uh, to, to some extent, uh, uh, reduce a bit. Yeah, thank you. So are there any other questions? At least I don't see any. Mm. Now, Thomas has wrote, written, uh, and I can uh, read it out loud. loud. Uh, one thing, though, is in the heavy fo focus on seawater heat pumps, quite risky because of single technology. Why not uh, a more distributed solution? Um, well, um, uh, number one, it's it's a baseline scenario. No, 
So uh, of course, um, if uh, if we if we uh, see uh, other sources of uh, of waste heat, for example, of course we shall uh, use them. Um, uh, number two, uh, we are quite confident. We have uh, experts in the uh, in in uh, in the NG group in particular dealing with heat pumps. We are confident uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, seawater heat pumps uh, to uh, to supply the uh, the heat. Uh, it's 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 not uh, you know uh, uh, a major technological uh, breakthrough. It's uh, seawater heat pumps are used. Uh, Elsewhere, in, you know, in other places, you know, in, in in Stockholm, for example, for for quite a long time, and uh, Oslo for is another example. Um, we have uh, experience ourselves in 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 other places, and we we don't see it as a, as a major risk. Uh, Thomas, uh, does this uh, answer your question, or do you know some? Uh, specific things. I think that it answered his question. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, he's happy with the, uh, your answer. That's a good thing. He's very wise young uh, mm -hmm. engineer. Uh, any other questions? Because it's, it seems that our, our timetable is right on the money. So I think that I thank you, Philip, and for your team, and hope all the, for the best for your solution that actually Helsinki will do as proposed. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to make this presentation this afternoon. All right, thank you. Bye. Okay.